and welcome to my channel. My name's Carol Manning and in this video I'm going to be painting this rather cute little teddy bear for Valentine's. I'm going to be using Winsor & Newton professional watercolours for this particular painting. Specifically I'm going to be using raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, Vantac brown, sepia, cadmium free red, alizarin crimson, ivory black and I'm also going to be using some buff titanium savango tube paint. I normally swatch out the colours that I'm going to use in a painting first. It helps me to keep a reference myself of what I'm doing and also helps me to look and see against the picture whether those are the colours I want to use. They're slightly different from the reference photo, but um, that was more choice than anything else. So I've got my paints mixed up and my picture drawn out and taped down. So I'm going to be starting by putting a wash of raw sienna over and a bit of Van Dyke Brown and I'm using a wet on wet technique for the first part of this painting, sort of the first half of the painting. So while the paint's still wet I'm dropping in darker colours to create the shadow and also it just creates, letting it create a type of fluffy effect. Blue in the middle was a mistake. Picked up the wrong colour. So I'm just putting some sepia in that middle bit. So dark brown, very dark brown and again just going through the process and dropping it in for the shadows. I'm going to be doing a lot of layering in this painting. I'm starting with doing the wet and wet technique but then I'll be layering fur levels over the top as well as doing some more dropping in colours. So I am dropping in there some burnt sienna to get that ready brown and I'm just rubbing out not all of the lines, just making it a bit lighter. I normally do that before I start filming, but I forgot today, so I thought I may as well leave it on the video as it shows part of my process. So working, I'm gonna be working around the whole of the teddy bear, adding in a wash of raw sienna again and then dropping in the colours on top like I did with the ear. I quite like this effect when doing a teddy bear because it creates a quite fluffy underlayer. I apologise for some discrepancy in the lighting in this. I have a bit of a problem with my overhead light. It seems to be affected by fluctuations in the electri electricity supply, I think it is. And sometimes it works fine, other times it flickers crazy. So halfway through the video, I did have to turn it off because it got too bad. So the light lighting changes about halfway through. I will be using this teddy bear as the basis for a, a card. I'll probably be adding some sort of background to it later on. Not quite sure what as such at the moment. I 
have to pick that up because I had too much wet on wet next to each other there. It just went to each into each other. Didn't give it long enough to dry out. Also got another painting, the Valentine's in process as well as this one, so hopefully if it goes okay then I'll get that up for Valentine's Day as well. So putting in the darker values, I'm trying to create the lighter and darker values with the dropped in paint, so hence the fact that I'm using lighter and darker bits, but I'm trying to put the darker values for this in as I go along. Works quite well with this dropped in technique. So on to the next bit, I say it's just a case of working my way around and just repeating the process. The undercoat is very diluted, which is why it doesn't show up very much. So most of the paints I'm using are a set of 24 Winston Newton pan, half pan pa paints, but I have got a few tubes as well, which I'm using in this, which includes the sepia, the Van Dyke brown, which I'll be using at some point, and the titanium, buff titanium. And I'm using a number seven brush on this. these bigger parts anyway. If you want the reference photo for this I've put that a link to that in the description and if you want the line drawing then you can either pause at the end of video and screenshot alternatively I put the line drawings up on my Facebook group where they can be downloaded so you're welcome to join that. I say if I have taken the photos myself then I put the those up on my Facebook group as well. Whilst I normally paint botanicals and wildlife, I do quite enjoy doing other things on occasion and soft toys is one of the things I like doing, teddy bears in particular. So working my way around the feet, I'll be using a different colour for the nose area and the pads of the feet. So I'll be doing that separately. Again, putting in the darker values close to the edge of the seams around the feet. It's very dark as well as underneath part, underneath is the cushion he's holding.
I'm trying to do some of the filming now where you can see the palettes as well so you can see what colours I'm using and how I'm mixing. Wasn't quite room to fit the whole of the paint palette in because I'd have had to move the camera up well out the way and you wouldn't have seen the bear as well. But I thought my mixing palettes might be useful to see how I'm doing that. So I've left those in the film shop. Sort of dabbing my brush fairly regularly on the tissue there just to make sure I haven't got too much paint on the brush. I'm mixing up cadmium, cadmium free red and alizarin crimson for the cushion which I'm also going to do a wash of. So I'm starting with the cadmium free red as the undercoat just work carefully working my way around putting a few little lines taken into the fur go very carefully around the lettering you could if you want to do if you're doing this um, use some masking fluid on the letters I'm not very good with masking fluid personally I seem to get in rather a mess with it. I don't seem to be able to get a very fine line. I'm obviously doing something wrong with it. I don't seem to be able to get a very fine line with it. And it often goes where I don't want it. So although I do use it occasionally, I don't use it a huge amount because of the fact that I seem to get in a mess with it. That's just me. I can be very detailed when I'm painting, but with other things, I can be incredibly messy and clumsy. And I think the masking fluid comes into that category. So just giving it a bit more of a once over to make it a bit of a richer colour. So now I've got the basic undercoat, I'm dropping some of the Lizen Ring Crimson where I want the darker areas, more the shadows. This is a first step building up. Not too worried about the splodge there that's gone outside of the line because I'm going to be doing some darker brown underneath when I get to that part of the bear. So it will get covered up anyway. So when you're doing something like this and either it's an animal or a teddy bear, then making sure that when you paint something up to it you do do that those sort of fluffy lines into the fur. So I'm just mixing some black into that to create a really deep red and using that for darkest values and the shadows. Obviously it's going to dry out lighter than it looks when it's wet. So 
the combination of light areas and the dark areas creates the shape to the cushion. Just getting carefully going around the lettering. We'll be adding a bit more to this later on. Adding the middle of the bow in. And then just making a start on the underside of the bear. This is probably the darkest area that I am using, so I've got some black there as well as some sepia. So dropping in com combination of the two, so I'm just dropping it in like I was before. It does look a little bit splodgy as you go through the video, but that's more again when the light's catching it. Notice when I'm watching back videos, sometimes it looks like there's a splodge in an area and I think it is just where the light catches it, because when I look at the actual painting you can't s it's not so noticeable. And sometimes the camera distorts things slightly. So just adding in a touch of the burnt sienna there. So I'm making a fleshy type of colour. I'm using a mixture of yellow and reds and a little bit of brown just to create a fleshy colour. This is going to be for the pads and the nose area. I'm doing quite a bit, bit of mix in there because I'm trying to create some different shades I want to use. As you can see I'm testing it out on the paper, paper there and I'm adding some buff titanium into that to create that fleshy colour. Possibly and that's me making a, a mess because I didn't clean my brush properly or I picked some up on the water um, container. If you've got a set that's already got a flesh tinge into it, then just use that. My set hasn't, so I'm having to mix it up. And I'm making a sort of grey version of that for the shadows. It looks greyer than it actually is, but I can't light that dry lighter. enjoying this video perhaps if you could click the like button it'd be much appreciated as it helps my channel to grow and perhaps consider subscribing press the notification button if you want to see future videos be much appreciated those people that do Again, putting that darker colour with a bit of a slightly more orangey colour there onto the feet. It is a case of layering. I will be coming back to add more details to the fur, but um, I won't be putting fur lines into the pads or the 
nose area because that's quite s smooth material in the picture. So just touching in some, again this is where you should wait for things to dry. A bit more of that ready tinge into the feet and doing a little bit of lifting as well. So I am still adding really underneath colours. I haven't got to the point where I'm putting details over the top. So I'm dropping in a mixture of black, flat black and three ivory black and some sepia in areas. I keep saying lamp black but that's the Gottman colours. On the professional one set I've got ivory black. So yeah, it's just a case of working around, adding more layers to build up the both the colours and the tones. Obviously the dark and lighter tones is what give anything its shape. go around the mouth now that's dried off a bit. I'll so say it's really around the heart shape that the darkest colours are in this picture. So if you make a mistake just pick it up with a tissue. back to the burnt umber there I think I've got and just dropping some more colours around and I'm sort of dotting a bit around there but shows you how I go about it. This film is speeded up slightly. It's two times the speed of that I actually painted it. So it wasn't too long a painting. It took me a couple of hours this one. So I've left that to dry for a while and now I'm starting to tackle some of the more details. So I'm starting with the eyes and getting those put in. Oh, 
as I said there is a jump in colours here. This is where my light gave up the ghost for the day. I could not get it to stop flickering so I had to omit a feet and just add whatever lamps I could find around it. Which is why it's suddenly got more shadow and a bit more of a yellowy tinge. So using the black, that was for the I used black for the eyes and also using that for the nose and the mouth. So just carefully putting the shape of it in and then filling it in. There's a slight highlight on the top half, which I've tried to keep. So carefully drawing in the mouth. You'll see now I've switched to a miniature brush, um, a 10.0, and I'm starting to work my way around the bear with different colours now. Just putting in lots of fur lines, varying the length, doing a bit of crisscrossing looking where the different colours are. I'm varying between raw umber and burnt umber and also got some burnt sienna there on the right hand side that I might occasionally dip into. And I'm now beginning to build up the top layer. Bringing the fur lines slightly out into the white. Again, looking at the, sh the direction as well. And some Van Dyke brown at the moment. Going over the top of some of those darker areas with some fur lines. Actually working my way around everything. The process of doing the bear is not so different to painting an animal with fur. It's similar layering effect. Probably the only difference is I wouldn't normally do the drop in fluffy effect as the undercoat. That did sort of lend itself to a teddy bear. So 
So starting to layer on the face now and I'm still using that Van Dyke Brown. It's reasonably diluted, it's not really concentrated at the moment. Water dark colour but not so dark that it looks odd. So as you see when I'm doing the fur lines I am very in length, I am overlapping them, I'm changing direction slightly. So bring it out into the white area around the edges. So I'm going to be using next some sepia to put in the next level. Just putting it into the other palette just to be able to dilute it a bit more. Again, just going through the same process again. Using this one specifically more in the darker areas. I'm just getting over the top again in the bits I want a little bit darker. the odd dark lines in some of the other bits um, though that bit's not so dark where I want it darkest I'm obviously concentrating it putting the lines closer together
beginning to add some black into some areas. Darkening down that seam part yet again. I think actually I might have made a slight error there. I think that middle part of the palette might be a concentrated version of the sepia. I think the one above it's black. So still adding in some of the other colours, just putting some of the burnt umbra in places. quite a bit of patience with these paintings when you're doing the lots and lots of layering. I'm just in the middle of the bottom palette I've just put some buff titanium and I'm now going to put some of the more highlighted areas with buff titanium. So put in some of those strokes to catch it, create a bit more of a fluffy area in places. Buff type titanium is a tube paints and a bit more opaque and concentrated than the some of the other paints. So I'm now there using just a bit of the concentrated Chinese white. I'm just putting the odd bit in with the white. Don't add a huge amount of white. Just touching up those highlights on the eyes.
So just using a mixture of the blackened sepia just to add some more darker colours under the chin. Adding a bit more dark. Sometimes you think you've got it dark enough and then when it dries out, out you think no it still needs to be a little bit darker than that. So hence the fact that I've come back to this quite a few times. And it also gives it more of that layered effect of fluffy fur, the fact that you've got lots of layers over the top. Zoomed in slightly now so you can just see I'm putting in quite sure how well you can see. Very diluted black just to create a very light grey just to put a bit of shadow onto the word. Just adding a bit more colour onto the heart. Carefully go around those letters again. I did make a slight error. I'll go around that V. I went into it more than I wanted to, but correct that to date. Into it all in a bit and just to finish off I'm using a secure jelly pen I think it's a 10 or 8 or a 10 I'm using on this I can't remember which and just outlining the letters a bit
just wiping all tissue because it's picking up the odd bit of red. And I'm close to the end, so this is one of the final touches. You will notice, or you've probably noticed, um, a shadow's appeared under the bear. For some reason, that didn't film. I'm not quite sure why. Um, but it was just a, a, a diluted black. So all I've done is just put a grey shadow under it. Slightly darker towards the base of the bear. So here's the finished picture. I hope you enjoyed watching. The reference photos are just coming up if you wish to screenshot. Perhaps consider pressing the like and subscribing if you want to see future paintings. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully see you here again.